Hello lovely humans, Jen Foxbot here. In this episode of Math Mondays, we are going to start an exploration of the mathematics of machine learning. Yay! So fun! So machine learning and AI or artificial intelligence are pretty much everywhere at this point. And I think it's really important for us to understand what machine learning is so that we can better understand what it is capable of and what it is not so capable of. To first clarify, machine learning is actually a subset of AI. So you have AI up here, and then you have the subset of uh, AI called machine learning. And within machine learning, there's a, a number of different categories. One of the common ones is called deep learning, which uses what is called neural networks. Don't worry about that right now. We're gonna start with the basics. What is machine learning? And what does it actually mean to say that we're doing machine learning or that we're writing a machine learning algorithm? Algorithm is just a computer program. So machine learning is something very similar to what we do in science, which is where you make a bunch of observations or you have a bunch of data, and then you use that data to make predictions about things that you don't know that are uh, related to the data. If we have a bunch of data related to cars, we can't exactly make a bunch of predictions about planes because cars are different than planes, right? So I like approaching machine learning in this way because Doing science is much more familiar than doing machine learning, to most of us at least. So let's dig into it. What does this actually look like in practice? So if I put on my science hat and I go out and I have a question to the world, I gather some data, I do some observations, make some measurements, and then I have a subset of data that I can then plot on a handy dandy graph. Um, we're going to label this uh, T for time. I'm going to give it units because I have my scientist hat on. We'll label this one Y. We'll have meters for distance. And let's say I make a bunch of measurements that look like this, where each X represents a specific observation. Okay, so now I'm like, okay, I gathered a bunch of data but I'm looking for a pattern or a trend in the data. And this is where humans excel way more than computers. Humans are pretty good at, at looking at patterns or finding patterns. And so I look at this data and I say, hey, it kind of looks like there's a straight line that could fit my data. So I'm gonna break out my handy dandy <laughs> green, uh, green chalk and I'm gonna draw a best fit line. Now, if I was actually doing science, I probably would be plotting this um, and using some mathematical techniques or Excel, because it's built in, to actually find a best fit line. But if I'm doing this for hobbyist purposes or for teaching purposes, a uh, hand-drawn line is, is good enough. So now I have some information about what my trend line actually is. So because it is a straight line, I know the uh, general format of a straight line, which is y equals m times t, my variable, plus b, where m is the slope or the steepness of the line, and b is where it intercepts with this vertical axis. Now, the question is, how do I find m and b? Because that's going to determine how I use this pattern to make predictions about unknown data. So there's a couple of ways that I could do this. Um, one straightforward way would be to take data points that it intersects with and plug those in to find the slope and the y-intercept. Another way that I could do it um, is to kind of um, add up all of the data and take an average. Um, this is kind of what is happening behind the scenes in Excel. Um, so, this is basically what I would do if I were a scientist. Now, what's going on with machine learning? How do you get a program to recognize a pattern? Well, you have to write it into the program to find the pattern. <laughs> Computers are not smart like humans. Um, so, what you would do is you would say, okay, I have a bunch of data. I need to start somewhere. So, there's a few different ways to start 
um, or to initialize your machine learning program. Sometimes we just start with a random guess. And so you would need to give some constraints to your program. In this case, I would want to tell my program that we're dealing with a straight line. Um, if you want to generalize it more, you would just say, hey, we have some polynomial of a higher degree, um, let's say some form of y equals ax um, plus bx squared plus cx cubed plus dot 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 plus nx to the n. Um, so this would be if you didn't know if it was a straight line or not. Um, but let's say we want to just randomly initialize our program and so we say, hey, guess some line, and it draws a line like that. So now what do we do? We're like, that's not accurate. I want a better line. And your program is like, I don't know how to draw a better line. So you have to give it some instructions on how to do that. So how do we actually do that? Well, hey, what we can do is measure the distances to all of the data points add the add up those distances and um and then kind of divide uh, by the number of data points to get something like an average for how far away each of the data points are so you could think about um my green line if i were to do the same the average of the distances would be less than the blue line because the blue line is some distance away from all of the data points and it's very far away from data points like this whereas my green line is much closer to ooh, the dotted line is much closer to that data point so this green line is going to have a much smaller average um, of the distances to the data points um, so this is actually called a cost function in machine learning you don't need to remember that now but it's kind of shorthand for basically saying how close is our trend line to each of the data points. So now what you do, so the first one is randomly initialized and then you have this cost function and then you would say, okay, now draw me another line and let's say the next line is drawn up here and you do the same thing. You measure the distances to each of the data points, you add them up, and then you divide by the total number of data points. And then you would compare the results of the blue line to the results of the yellow line. If the yellow line did better, your program would probably draw another line this direction. Um, the red line would do worse, and so then it would probably draw another line in this direction and it would start to get closer and closer to the actual, um, or I should say actual, but to the most accurate trend line possible. Um, yeah, so humans are better at spotting patterns, but machines are very good at iterating quickly. So it can draw one, two, uh, three, four trend lines, probably in the amount of time that it could take me to crunch this. Well depends on how much data you've got. So that's pretty much it. You start a machine learning program by giving it some data. You tell it to randomly guess a best fit line. Then you tell it to measure the average distance to each of the data points. How far away is that trend line from your, from your data points? Guess a new function, compare the two, and then use that to figure out which way to move for the next trend line. And then you start to kind of oscillate about the best fit solution. Okay, that's pretty much the, pretty much, that's pretty much machine learning. Check, done, no problem. But what I really wanna highlight is that the basic uh, concepts in machine learning are not that complicated. We do get into some complex math to be able to implement this and dealing with data especially large amounts of data can be really challenging, but it is something that we can all better understand so that we can more, uh, more accurately understand what machine learning is and what it's not. Okay. Thank you for watching. I hope that that was helpful and I'll see you next time, friends. Bye.